Welcome to Social Distillation, the submarine still of the internet, where we attempt to drop the bead and pour white lightning straight onto your brain. Take two, because we tried this earlier in the week, but I was in so much pain that I sounded, as Sam put it, like I'd been curb stomped, which is how I felt, even though I was on opioids. So I was both stoned and still in intense amounts of pain, so it didn't go well. And I'm glad I kind of rewatched it before posting, because it really did feel like that or, or sound like that. And uh, both of them, like you just got beat up and were drugged up. And, uh, and also because some things you did say kind of piqued my interest and I put some stuff together to be a little more coherent in my response. So it, it was nice to have it in the moment, but I think for, for our purposes, it's better that I have this had this time to prepare. Well, well. What we're talking about is Ukraine, but we're going back a little bit uh to to kind of you set be able things to share up too by the way um because this what's happening shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone uh and there's there's certainly history here the history i'm going to start with as good internet arguments always do is with hitler this is from a um a review of a Churchill, a three-part Churchill biography. Churchill was one of the few European statesmen. Let that sink in for a second. One of the few European statesmen. So here you have the greatest threat to foreign stability. No one's bothered to read his damn book. Churchill was one of the few European statesmen who had trouble to read Mein Kampf, and he took its ranting seriously as a blueprint for Hitler's ambitions. For six long years, at great political and personal cost, he took it upon himself to sound the warning. Armed with facts and figures secretly provided by a remarkable network of informants in the foreign office, the military, and even Germany, Churchill detailed the German arms buildup, especially in air power, in the House of Commons, often to a nearly empty chamber on lecture platforms and in newspaper columns. He used every note in his wide rhetorical range to embolden a government that he that was, he said, decided only to be undecided, resolved to be irresolute, adamant for drift, solid for fluidity, all powerful to be impotent. Now, why do I bring this up? Because Putin being pesky is not new. This is from an article in October of 2016 about a raid on a far right Hungarian radical by the Hungarian police. Remember, Hungary is a member of NATO. Hungary is not on the border with Russia. So there's not that ostensible uh, uh, rationale that he has with his uh, with Georgia and with, with the Ukraine. There's no longer any doubt that he, uh, Yorkos, or however you pronounce that, uh, the guy who was raided and arrested, that he and his group possessed military-grade weapons since one of them just killed a policeman. Where they obtained these illegal guns is an important question that needs to be answered. Secret connections to the Kremlin are now becoming public too. In particular, Gyorkos and his self-styled band of neo-Nazis, publicly professing hatred for Jews in Roma, can be linked to GRU, that is Russian military intelligence, according to security officials in Budapest. His GRU ties got the attention of Hungarian counter spies last year. This gets a little convoluted, but pay attention to this. When Gyorkos posted photos online, including on his Facebook page, that he claimed depicted Hungarian weapons, including a T-72 tank that were allegedly being sent to Ukraine to fight Russian forces in that country's east. Gyorkos explained the photos were reader submitted. This resulted in public uproar and a formal protest by the Kremlin to Budapest, which replied that the matter was a deception scheme perpetrated by Moscow. Hungarian intelligence determined that the images were supplied to Gyorkos by GRU, which considered this trickery a successful smearing of NATO. Doesn't that sound interestingly familiar to other things that Russia has been doing? And again, this is from 2016. Mm -hmm. And this is where I have to rant about the right for a little bit and the left. But 
the right could have tried to push through the narrative, but you, you can't when Trump is your leader and he is an unabashed narcissist and is mm-hmm. going to make everything about him. So uh, Crowder in particular likes to laugh off the, uh, the claims of Russian interference in the election. Okay, and by pointing out that it was only something like thirty thousand dollars in Facebook ads, well, you have a thought. Yeah, five dollars reaches a lot of people because I used to do that with my uh, gym. Mm -hmm. Five dollars reaches a lot of accounts, so thirty thousand dollars is is pretty significant. And and that's just what we know about. We also know that there are there are bots, there are fake accounts. There are non-state actors uh, that Russia well, let me, uses. Let me, let me bring those, those screens up. I was going to bring it up after your talk here, but it's more relevant to what you're saying now. Yeah. Uh, so what we have here, this is MIT Technology Review. Uh, let's go to the top. Whoa. Where's the, there we go. Story about troll farms. And this is from their, their research uh, journals just consolidated into an article. Uh, So troll farms reaching 140 million people uh, prior to 2022 election. And I wanted to bring up two parts of this, but here's, here's an example of one. And this was a turned out to be a bot farm. So it wasn't even, it, it was made by a bot to, to bring people together and make them pissed off basically. Uh, and it was targeted at a certain audience that you could probably see who that would be and then uh and put up basically the, you see these memes come up and this is one of my beefs and uh-huh. we might go into this later with the treat yourself crowd look at the way those things are worded too uh this this particular site is worded to be abrasive so it's going to piss off you know, dads, it's going to piss off moms that maybe have a baby daddy instead of a husband. It's going to piss off just a lot of people and then give them little memes to share to keep that, that anger going. Uh, But when we look at the breakdown, the troll farm pages combined to form the largest Christian American page on Facebook, 20 times uh, larger than the next largest. And this is how many people it reaches 75 million monthly. The largest African American page on Facebook, three times larger than the next largest, uh, which also happened to be a bot as well. So reaching 30 million US users, which is very considerable because that's what about 10% of the US population and African American population reaches is only about 14%. So uh, that, that's almost every African American that has access to the internet. So the second largest Native American page, quite a, quite a large number there, considering the, the population breakdown. Uh-huh. The fifth largest women's page, and I think the one I brought up earlier would count as a women's page because it's an angry mommy's page, really, uh, reaching 60 million monthly. So it was primarily in the U.S., but that, that's the breakdown I wanted to bring forward. So these things exist, and they're bots. And they're, they're bots created to be divisive. Uh, also, this exists. So again, ranting against the right here. Saying Trump colluded with Russian hackers is a different accusation than Russian hackers were involved. Uh, and also, in this other article, it tells you where they're from. Oh, look. Probably Russian hackers going uh-huh. from a re- remote location. So this is uh, justice.gov. So these are these are not media sources. This is in 2017 and 2018. So more involvement. And this one uh, centered around the Olympics because Russia, remember, if we look back, was banned because they were doing too many drugs that enhanced performance. And this is another, this is an FBI source on that same one that I just had up. So, and back to you. 
Well, I had to pull up another page here real quick. So remember when the DNC, so this disappeared really fast because everything quickly became about uh, Trump, Russia and Trump interfere or Russia interfering with the election, Trump colluding, blah, blah, blah. That kind of all got conflated. Uh, I got annoyed with some of the commenters I would watch because that all kind of got conflated. But these were two separate issues. The DNC was hacked. This is where we found out that um, uh, like, who was it? Uh, Donna Brazil of CNN had been sharing the questions ahead of time because she was going to be the, one of the debate moderators for the Democratic primary, and she was sharing it ahead of time with the Hillary camp. And there were some other, you know, uh, uh, emails that came out about how uh, the DNC screwed over Sanders. But it all disappeared really fast because of the Trump Russia stuff. Um, but here's uh, from from Market Watch. This is October 2016. That they had Russia had even stopped even denying that they were the ones who hacked it. Um, and further proof of that really was that it showed up in WikiLeaks, which a lot of uh, in former intelligence officials and intelligent or even current and intelligence analysts will tell you that WikiLeaks is probably a front for Russian intelligence. Uh, not, not that, you know, uh, what's his bucket is necessarily a Russian agent, but he may just be a stooge, but. Russian intelligence uses WikiLeaks to put stuff out there that they want to damage uh, governments and people they don't like. Um, now, now, I will say as a caveat to that, that doesn't mean the information is incorrect. Cor right, right. Yeah. But so th that, that's, that's the important part of WikiLeaks is, is so much of it turned out to be correct. And it, it, it exactly is. Okay. Uh, this may be a controversial example, but remember when Colin Powell went before the UN and gave the rationale for invading Iraq? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that, that's very relevant to right now because we're talking about Russia invading Ukraine, and we're going to get to the propaganda mm -hmm. on that. So he presented evidence. There were recorded phone calls. There were satellite images. There were there were photos. He presented all this evidence. That evidence, you know, you have to be a serious loon to say that Colin freaking Powell went up there with manufactured evidence. That doesn't mean the interpretation was correct. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the decision of what to do about it was correct. But he was presenting real information. And that's what WikiLeaks is for Russian intelligence is if they get something nice and juicy that will be damaging or embarrassing Mm -hmm. to a foreign individual or power they they want a way to release it that's second hand so it's not coming directly from russia mm -hmm. and that's what wikileaks does and so that's why you should always take take what comes out from wikileaks one with a grain of salt and then as always when it comes to politics qui bono who been who benefits who well, benefits we're going to get to a grand scheme kind of uh point to all of this i think and uh, I think it's the true meaning of unity and how, how it kind of, WikiLeaks is a good example. Yes, it's, it's information from the quote unquote enemy, but it's also correct. And the people that had the information brought out against them should be punished in some way or, mm -hmm. or removed from office or, or whatever the appropriate action is. But we also... But that's where the American people have to say, oh, crap, I don't need to fight with my brother about this. We just need to kind of clean up our own people. Right. And that was that was my complaint about the right when it came to this. I, I mean, so this is a lot of these links I'm pulling up were stuff I found when I, re I was attempting to get a blog going. And I just the primary in the election of 2016 burnt me out on politics. And so I, I wrote I wrote for it in 2016 and then I stopped. Um, and and this was my uh, one of my post election uh, articles. And the point was. 
I don't care if it was a plug nickel that Russia uh, invested into Facebook ads. They're a hostile power and they're interfering in our election. We've got the DNC hack. We've got these Facebook ads. We've got other shenanigans that we suspect came from them. Yeah, that's just Facebook. Twitter is probably Mm -hmm. worse. It's Mm -hmm. just Twitter is not as good about, and, you know, give Zuckerberg credit. He is actually trying to keep bots out of Facebook. Uh, It's just the AI is fighting with the other AI. And one is getting ahead, and then the other gets ahead, and then the other gets ahead. Instead of a serious and thorough investigation on what a hostile foreign power did during one of our elections, we fought it. Became it it became all party politics. Mm -hmm. It became all about uh, Trump, anti-Trump, supporting Trump or taking Trump down. Screw that. That's not the point. The point is, what did Russia do? Why did they do it? How did they do it? Mm -hmm. And we never bothered to pay attention to that. Uh, And it had repercussions all through Trump's presidency and into today. Um, But why are they doing it? And this is where we kind of come full sake with the starting with Winston Churchill. This is from the Center for Security Policy. It's a Uh, It's a think tank, and this is from March of 2015. And I I think I found out about this guy even before that, uh, but I don't recall. Uh, Yeah, I think it was around 2012 when I first learned about this guy. I was trying to understand the goals of Russian expansion in their former Soviet sphere of influence and its recent alliances with a wide swath of fringe European parties on both sides of the political spectrum, should examine the ideology and teachings of Russian political philosopher, Dr. Alexander Dugin. Dr. Alexander Gelevich Dugin is a former professor of sociology and international relations at Moscow State University, a Duma advisor, and allegedly a one-time member of Putin's inner circle. Dugin is the most well-known and ideological influence, in, ideologically influential member of Izborsgizh Club. Ugh, Slavic stuff. Founded in late 2012, a think tank created by former Soviet journalist come ultranationalist pundit Alexander Prohanov to promote nationalist and traditionalist views to the Russian government and public at large. And it would not be off the mark to describe their geopolitical views as irredentist and aggressively anti-Western. With his long hair and beard and piercing blue eyes, Dr. Dugan certainly looks the part of Putin's... Putin's Rasputin, Dr. Dugan, one of the founding members of the National Bolshevik Party, a neo-Stalinist group. Uh, as an aside, this is something, one of the weird, many weird things that happened after the fall of the USSR. This group called the National Bolshevik Party founded, which attempted to synthesize Stalinism and fascism, which is loads of fun. Yeah, well, we talk about how small the gap is between communist and fascist is so uh so well again fascism basically is add nationalism to communism and mm -hmm. so the point is that he is the creator of the fourth political theory which is an attempt to unite anti-classical liberal political ideologies into a common front under a new political theory so dugan's political philosophy is that there were three great uh, political movements of the 20th century, Western liberalism, communism, fascism. All three of them have failed. He is going to take elements from all three to create a fourth political movement. Um, Dugan's Eurasian Youth Union, founded in the wake of Ukraine's Orange Revolution in 2004, promotes an anti-Western pro-Russian Weltanschauung throughout Russia, Ukraine, until being banned from vandalism, other areas of the former USSR, and Turkey. All right, so basically Eurasianism is this idea that um, how how, how weird do I want to get here? So he has this overriding ideology that there is an inherent difference and conflict 
between the continental cultures like those of Central Asia and the what he calls Atlantic or Atlanticist cultures of the imperial powers of the West, America and Western Europe, and that those uh, oceanic cultures uh, are uh, will inevitably clash with each other. And he wants to essentially recreate the Soviet Union, but as a looser confederation instead of a, a, a direct control from Moscow like the USSR was, which was, they always used in their propaganda, Western imperialism. The USSR was an empire, uh, hence why you have all these broken off states along its borders. So in order to do this, he has been trying to cultivate um, alliances uh, with this sphere of influence, including places like Iran, which he sees as having um, cultural similarities and uh, similar goals in geopolitics. Um, same thing with Turkey. Turkey was a, is a member of NATO, and yet he has been trying to cultivate um, closer ties with Turkey because he sees them as more naturally aligned with Russia. Uh, but now let's skip on down to the money shot. Okay, well, here he is. I don't know how many people remember. Um, in July 2008, a month before the uh, Russian invasion of Georgia, Alexander Dugan in, in visited pro-Russian fighters in South Ossetia and made this statement. Here is the border and the battle of civilizations. I think Americans are great, but we want to put an end to America's hegemony. Our troops will occupy the Georgian capital, Tbilisi, the entire country, and perhaps even Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula. The fighting and annexation of Georgia was all part of the same movement. And he was saying back in 2008 that they were going to retake all the whole of Ukraine, or at least the Crimean Peninsula. Okay, so now here's where it gets to directly impacting us. Dugan states that defeating the United States and limiting their power in the Eastern Hemisphere is a necessary task, referring to the United States as a necessary scapegoat. Russia can and should use their natural resources to turn former American allies into Russian allies. Think about how the, the closening of ties between Russia and Germany, of all places, before this mm -hmm. happened. Russia was getting closer and closer to Germany because because of trade connections, because of Russians supplying Germany with uh, petroleum and natural gas. That's, was, that's what the Nord Stream pipeline is. It's running directly through, through the Baltic Sea from Russia to Germany. That's part of this idea. Use, their, use, use the fact that they are a petrol state to influence countries that need that the petroleum and natural gas, and then use that as the carrot to pull them away from the United States. For the United States itself, and here the author is quoting from one of Dugan's books that I believe was published in the late 90s. It is especially important to introduce geopolitical disorder into internal American activity, encouraging all kinds of separatism and ethnic, social, and racial conflicts actively supporting all dissident movements, extremist, racist, and sectarian groups, thus destabilizing internal political processes in the U.S. It would also make sense simultaneously to support isolationist tendencies in American politics. So this is what got me thinking. Again, when, when, when was that written? So this article was written in 2015. But, but but the the Dugan's words were. Uh, he started to come to prominence around 2010 ish, or at least started to get noticed by the West in 2010 ish. Okay, so read that 
quote again about sewing division. <laughs> it is especially important to introduce geopolitical disorder into internal American activity, encouraging all kinds of separatism and ethnic, social, and racial conflicts, actively okay. supporting all dissident movements. Ethnic, racial, social conflicts, the top troll farms, Christian group, African American pages, Native American pages, women's pages, probably feminist based women's pages. That's one data point. Again, we're not going to draw lines, but you just gave a data point. Dugan's philosophy, data point. These are the ones affected the most. Data point, these people exist. Another data point. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Whoops, not that one. All started with the the uh, infusion of mass social media in society. Uh -huh. So, and and the, the the screens I just showed you were also regular media. The use of those words. So yep. look at who's targeted on the social media side. Look at what started happening in the media. Again, we're not accusing the media. We're calling them useful idiots at this point. Uh, well, there, 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 there was also a good deal of um, greedy graft going on there too, because that the the regular media and social media created a negative feedback loop because that the social media was how you generated clicks, which is how you generated revenue. Okay, so the social media was creating this this environment of uh of of bubbles and buzzwords and then the media was taking advantage of that to generate more revenue for themselves by feeding those those bubbles mm -hmm. well that's what that's why i think the useful idiot uh you dangle a little bit of cash in front of someone's face they'll they'll get pretty stupid quick mm -hmm. so right. so we've got data point one this guy's got a plan. Data point two, this started happening in the media at this time. Data point three, these are the targeted groups on social media by what is most likely Russian bots. Mm -hmm. And four, that these hackers do exist and they have been meddling in our affairs for quite some time. Yes. So, so those are the four data points we bring together. Now, if you want to draw the lines, that's when you're kind of edging on the what, what would we consider the conspiracy theory, I think. I, I, uh, I will, as an aside, say that um, it's not just Russia. Um, North Korea does a lot of cyber shenanigans. Mm -hmm. um, well, and we got, got to bring in the mix the, the World Economic Forum, too. China has what they call, and I did. I, I wasn't planning on bringing this up, so I don't have anything for it, but if you, if you want to look into it, just search the China Uncensored page for 50 Cent Army. Uh, and no, it has nothing to do with the rapper. Where that comes from is China employs, um, China employs basement trolls, literally employs them, and they pay them 50 cents a post, the equivalent of 50 cents a post. That's where the name comes from. So they employ all of these net nerds to, um, to troll and to overwhelm um, videos and posts that are critical of uh, the Chinese Communist Party and Chinese policy with negative comments, negative reviews, thumbs down, and all of this stuff. So China is an active member in this game as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Russia, but the ultimate effect on us is the same. Well, think of these these world events, uh, such as the the Russian invasion, such as the social justice movement in the states, uh, the COVID nineteen debacle. All of these things, think of them as waves, and a lot of surfers are going to jump on those waves. Uh, so, so it's 
these are things that kind of exist and a lot of people benefit from them. So they are going to do what they can to, 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 to reap what, the, what, what is being developed in, in that situation. Speaking of which, are you ready to get a little weird? So I talked about this. Is this what you warned me about? Oh, we're, we're, we're about to start down that road. All right. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. So I mentioned that uh, a lot of these sources were things that I had dug up when I was researching this post I wrote after the 2016 election. One of the sources I used was a dead link. And I went digging to try and find the article elsewhere uh, because where it came from was a, a website that was like worldaffairsjournal.org or something like that. Um, I finally found the article that I used. I was trying to figure out what is this website that it's on. I was looking around and well, we'll get to that in a second. So it was talking about Dugan. Um, and while, while you're looking for that, I, I, I do want to bring up something. I was thinking about it. We put on the tinfoil hat when we don't want signal coming mm -hmm. out. But what did we used to do in the 80s to our antenna to get a better signal? <laughs> Put foil around it. The, the tinfoil had itself as a conspiracy so they can read it better. Dang it. <laughs> uh, where was that? This is gross and creepy. Okay, now I can't remember when this was originally posted on this World Affairs Journal. Um, and this, that, that's where I started to figure out what in the world is this website? Because there is there is attribution here. There's, a, there's the link I use to this worldaffairsjournal.org. And it, it tells you who the authors are. But I'm like, there's no, you know, normally when you find a, uh, an article posted on a website like this, it'll, it'll have a date to it, like the one I just showed. And this didn't. And uh, anyway, first, first the article. So what we were talking about with Dugan and his ability to use groups like him but dugan in particular and his ability to use the internet so he um with his with it's often ad hoc often intellect anti-intellectual worldview in which the manufactured fact is no less robust than the real one the internet is the perfect medium for duganism in particular, he has exploited the mechanism of instantaneous publishing on the internet to retract or dissociate himself from controversial claims without harming their ability to propagate. In a notorious incident on his social network page, <clears throat> the meme so remember, propagate. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So remember, this is this is 2016 at the earliest, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit before that. He put back to this back to the article. He posted the fabricated story of a Russian-speaking boy allegedly crucified in Ukraine by pro-Western militants and released a video in which he declared that the time had come to retaliate and, quote, kill, kill, kill. Flashing his academic credentials, he added soberly, quote, I say this to you as a professor. After an outraged petition condemning the story and the statement was started on change.org, Moscow State University terminated Dugan's contract but almost immediately retracted its decision, blaming it on a clerical error. Dugan removed the story from his social network page, but by that point it had gone viral among pro Russia's pro-war groups and achieved status as a nationalist war cry. So again, I re remember there have been conflicts, border conflicts going on with Russia and Ukraine for a while now. Well, um, I'm gonna give you this is an American example of the same thing happening. So uh, New York Times posted a story on children in COVID and the numbers were way ridiculous, way overblown. And then they posted a redaction a short time later because it wasn't even close to the real numbers. So fast forward, we've got this Supreme Court uh, hearing for the mandates, the OSHA mandates, whether they're constitutional or not. And a dissenting voice was Sotomayor. And the numbers she quoted months later were the numbers from that New York Times article that was later redacted. Mm -hmm. 
because everybody sees the original story. And I'm kind of disappointed. We have a Supreme Court justice that is quoting a newspaper versus actually getting the numbers from <laughs> the health authorities, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but uh, she was quoting something that was the true definition of misinformation that was later redacted but nobody sees the re redaction. Uh -huh. Do you think anybody in the New York Times is going to page 20 and saying, oh, that story I read a month ago was wrong? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the bogus story is always the page one headline mm -hmm. and the redaction is always buried somewhere in the Mac. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, that's, and that's one of those things was you, you don't make it right because the damage is done. The damage is already done. Um, did you have anything else, any other links to share, uh, in regards to this before things get really weird? Uh, troll farms, unless you wanted to see anything more in the ones I already showed. I don't know. So. All right. So I'm reading through this article and at first, you know, cause I was doing this at 2am, uh, cause I woke up at 2am for some reason and couldn't go back to sleep. So I was doing this and I'm scrolling around, I'm scrolling around. I'm like, okay, well, there's the link I use. That's still a dead link. Where's the, where's the, where's the, okay. There's the authors. There's not any date. There's Alexander Dugan, who definitely looks like Rasputin. And what's all this? I mean, they're, they're showing all the Dugan's books here and wait a minute. This is Dugan's group. Fourth political theory. So Keep in mind what I just read you here. This is Dugan himself or Dugan's people. And they just, they reprinted this article as a positive. They don't care that it talks about all of the, from the Western view, negative things that he's done. They are, I would think, proud of that. So they reposted this article that I was using. That's where I found this. And including the, horrendous story about calling for war and violence based off of a wholly fabricated story that was immediately redacted and it didn't matter he his point got across his his goal was achieved it became a rallying mm -hmm. cry for pro-war russians they're fine with that they're fine if you know that yeah we use something bogus but hey it worked didn't it Okay, give me my screen back because I accidentally brought something up earlier that actually is relevant then. How many people are still saying hands up, don't shoot? How many people are still saying, say her name, she was sleeping in bed? Uh, I mean, bring up any number of additional ones. The meme has started. Hands up, don't shoot is the meme. And guess what it did? It tore the country apart. She was sleeping in bed is the meme. Wasn't true, but do we still have friends that are still posting about her sleeping in bed. Um, yeah. It's, it's, so it, it doesn't matter what the truth is once the meme has started and taken hold. All right. So we're, we're, we're starting down the rabbit hole after Alice and... This is from that from that website from this pro Dugan website. Um, I mean, it's it's the fourth political theory. That's that's his thing. So this is an English version of his think tank, basically. This is, in his own words, what the fourth political theory is. I hope you didn't get put on a list by going through this website. Nah, who knows? In today's world, the impression is growing that politics has ended at least the politics that we used to know. Liberalism stubbornly fought it out with its political enemies, which had offered alternative recipes with conservatism, monarchism, traditionalism, fascism, socialism, and communism. And finally, at the end of the 20th century, it beat them all. It would have been logical to surmise that politics would become liberal, while all of liberalism's opponents, having turned up on the periphery, would begin to rethink strategies and to form a new front, the periphery against the center. But at the beginning of the 21st century, everything followed a different script. Liberalism, having always insisted upon the minimization of the political, 
decided after its victory to countermand politics altogether, possibly in order not to allow formation of political alternatives and to make its rule eternal or form the completion of the political discussions of the day due to the lack of enemies who are necessary, according to Carl Schmitt, for the proper constitution of a political position. In any case, liberalism drove the matter to the wrapping up of politics. At the same time, it itself changed, having moved on from the level of ideas, political programs, and declarations, and entered into the very makeup of social reality, which became liberal, but not in a political, but in a natural everyday matter. As a consequence of such a turn of history, all the political ideologies that feuded passionately with one another of the last century lost their currency. Conservatism, fascism, and communism, together with their secondary variations, lost. But liberalism, having won, quickly mutated into a way of life. Consumerism, individualism, and a postmodern style of fragmented and sub-political being. Politics became biopolitics, redeployed to on an individual and sub-individual level. It turns out that not only the defeated political ideologies, but politics as such left the scene, including the liberal variant. For that reason, the formulation of alternatives is proliferating. Those who do not agree with liberalism found themselves in a difficult situation. The victorious enemy dissolved and disappeared. They're fighting with the air. How then is one to engage in politics when politics is no longer? Now, if that sounded like confusing bat crap craziness, don't be alarmed. You're not alone. Even if you are a giant nerd who has been reading this kind of stuff since the eighth grade, I had to reread that three times. That's the fourth time I've read it. It's still a bunch of words salad for the most part. But he does kind of get to the point at the end, which is something that you've kind of touched on. Yeah. Well, touched on is the basis of my complete <clears throat> ideology we've been going through since we started this, this channel. It is that, I mean, with, with every kind of craziness, there's a kernel of truth there. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not just the... <clears throat> Who, who is it that you quote that says when the barbarians at the, at the gate will be Douglas Murray will be busy arguing ab about pronouns or something like mm -hmm. that? Well, what Dugan is saying here is that the reason they're at the gates is because you're arguing about pronouns mm -hmm. that the the. What what should have been an adoption of Western liberal democracy after the fall of the Cold War and the. You know, the proof that uh, the, the communist model was bogus, it was a, a, a house of cards. But instead, what we ended up spreading or what what ended up overtaking Western liberal de political liberalism was cultural postmodernism. Mm -hmm. And the more we have spread that across the world, the more that has become our prime export, the more lowercase c conservative traditionalist type people like Dugan have rejected it and seen, because of that, seen America and the West as a dangerous enemy. There is something I want to bring forward. I, I, I need to get it from... My Facebook page because I sent it to myself via that. But it's a it's a direct quote from Putin. Well, I guess translated to English, but where are you? Come on. And of course, that's that's not to say that Dugan's political philosophies have merit. He's still an authoritarian. He does he does reject Western liberalism on the whole because he rejects checks um that kind of so so you brought this up earlier in one of the previous things where he he separated content mm. what he called continental and then the west and this is this is putin talking here the problem mm. that you americans have in dealing with us is that you think you understand us but you don't you look at the chinese and you think they're not like us but you look at russians and you think they're like us but you're yeah. wrong we are not like you and this is the truth. And uh, I think a lot of people would benefit from it because he's a very articulate speaker as well. He's a Russian born comedian that lives in UK. His name is Konstantin Kissin. 
And uh, he has probably the most sober, uh, I wouldn't call it a monologue because it's done in, in uh, kind of an interview format with his usual partner on trigonometry. Uh, but it, it's, it's really the most sober view of this whole conflict that I think you'll get anywhere. Now, it, whether he's right or wrong on everything, that's, that's not the case. That's not the, the point. It's that he's probably mostly right just because he's taking a very mm -hmm. uh, kind of outside looking in, relaxed, uh, logical view on things. And knowing the Russian people like he does, having that yeah. perspective as well. And he, he, he says, I hate to prescribe good or evil to Putin and the Russian people and even uh, the other side on, in Ukraine, because Putin is doing exactly what any strong leader that believes what he believes and his people believe would do. Uh -huh. There was weakness in the moment, and they believe Ukraine is part of Russia, or at uh -huh. least these parts of Ukraine. They all believe it. Propaganda was probably part of it because of the, like you said, the viral video of you, uh, of the, the uh, crucifixion. But yeah, there was that, also there was also truth to it because Zelensky did not treat the Russian speaking areas very well. Uh, so so there was some truth to add to the propaganda. Right. Well, just like we did in the racial thing. There's truth to the hor horrid nature of George Floyd's death. But it it played into the propaganda right. that was being spread about systemic you know issues and and what was the actual motivating factor behind it. So, if you're the uh, typical Russian person, you probably believe at least lean in a certain direction that allows Putin to to do like you said you you brought up before protests, but it, it doesn't mean that it's the majority of the population just because there's protests. Uh, right. And so he, his, his basic statement is Putin just did what a, a leader would do in the moment of weakness. There's, there's, yeah, it would be wrong to think that um, Putin is crazy just because he's a psychopath. He is certainly, he is certainly a killer. Yeah. Um, he has, it, it is, is pretty well established that he has um, had lots of people, journalists and dissidents killed there are even allegations he's done some of them himself. Mm -hmm. um, certainly back in his KGB days, he, he almost certainly did some of this stuff himself. Uh, but that doesn't mean he's a crazy person. There is a rationale to what he's doing. And Ukraine is caught in the middle. Uh, so it's, it's oh, interesting that you bring up the trigonometry guy. Hold on a second. So okay. I'd forgotten about this, but that first article I shared mentioned the Orange Revolution. What that was, was a huge protest movement in like 2004, after an election that was just fraught with, um, I mean, are we even allowed to say it uh, with a, with a the foreign election? The, yeah. the F word. Yeah. So uh, including there were, there were UN and foreign observers there. We'll, and we'll, they we'll call said, it shenanigans. They said, yeah, this, this, this election's not legit. And the, the schism was a, uh, a candidate who was more pro-Russian wanted Ukraine to have closer ties with Russia and a candidate who wanted to have Ukraine have closer ties with Europe. And that's why Ukraine finds itself in this position. So the Orange Revolution was this huge series of protests that went on for like a month until a new election was called and held and the pro-Europe guy won. And then he served a couple of terms. And then the, the, the guy who ended up losing the pro-russian guy was the one who replaced him so there's been this back and forth and russia's played a major part in that uh put the tinfoil hat back on i didn't mean to go down this road but the obama's uh the obama administration and Hillary, hillary's state department also played a major role in that and george soros funded groups it is According to Russia experts I've read, Russian interference in the 2016 elections was purely personal. Putin was being vindictive and getting even with Hillary because of the things that she did while the Secretary of State in the Ukraine to push pro-Europe, anti-Russia groups mm -hmm. to, to, to bring down that pro-Russian uh, 
prime minister or president, I can't remember what they have there. Um, and, and because they're stuck in the middle there with that kind of Slavic mentality, because your, your quote from Putin, Patton said the same thing at the end of World War II of you can't treat these guys like Westerners, like Western Europeans. They, well, and I think, yeah, people, we're allied, but we're not the same. I think people, especially in the United States of America, who are not the most savvy with world, uh, world history and geography, for the most part, forget the fact that Russia is Asia, not Europe. Mm -hmm. And they always associate Russia as, as Europe just because they have lighter skin. And this is where that stupid bias comes in. Right. Uh, just because they have lighter skin does not mean they're European. They have a very different history, which has created a very different culture. Thousands of years of, uh, of history over what mm -hmm. we have. Uh, let's take a bathroom break. And I want to go down a, a, a thought rabbit hole. Okay. okay, sorry for that quick bathroom break, but we're going to go. So we're, let's kind of take a step back because you brought up Dugan's potential strategy as well, which was racial division, uh, all, all the different social group division. We'll call it tribal divisions, right? So I think uh, back to one of the, our themes for this whole uh, podcast is, is that tribalism and, and how we can kind of overcome that. So these tribal divisions, we got to introduce two more tribes to it because you brought up the 2016 election and Hillary and everything. It might not have just been about revenge because when you come to the United States, we have two very important tribes that cause a lot of division, which is the red side and the blue side. And what better way to sow even more div division than to put $30,000 into Facebook and create these bots again and create an also a political divide based on all those other things. And then not only that, but the F word is part of the divide, right? The shenanigans in the uh, 2016 election, the shenanigans in the 2020 election, uh, or the at least perceived notion of those shenanigans is part of the divide. So the whole goal of that strategy was to create an unstable environment in the people who can interfere with what you want to do, right? And so it might not have completely been about revenge against Hillary. It could have been just to further the divide. Well, it, it certainly was a, a twofer. It was a win-win yeah. for Putin. And if you wanted to create more division in those other arenas, who better to be the president than Trump? Because then you can come back on the back end and say, and have your bots formulate again, that he is X, Y, Z, xenophobe, uh, racist, uh, homophobe, whatever, because he kind of oh. gives that air, even though he kind of did a lot of things to help those communities when he was a businessman. So it's, uh, it, it, who better? So it, it's not a collusion on his end, Again, he ends up in that situation, one of the useful idiots, because he becomes a tool for the for the ultimate goal. His bombast is used mm -hmm. against him, is used as as another uh, tool to further sow division by those who are trying to sow division for their own mm -hmm. political gains. Um, and that's it, it's it's a good point, because, you know. One of the, th the other things driving me crazy about the right and Russia is right now you have people like Steve Dace, who's one of the guys I listen to regularly, saying, I don't care about Russia or I don't care about Ukraine. I don't care about it because of, you know, what our own government's doing to us because of what's going on in Canada. Um, OK, well, you can care about those things, too, and still care about Ukraine. One, two, he's also kind of tiptoeing around the line of going into full Alex Jones mode about you know, this, this being just a false flag, uh, uh, excuse to, to rerun the COVID playbook, but now the emergency is war with Russia, right? Okay. Well, it can be true that there are going to be opportunists who use this conflict for their own ends. That doesn't mean that all the things I just laid out about Putin and Dugan and their political philosophy are not also true. It is also true that for a long time, 
Russia has been meddling in the Ukraine, trying to pull it back in whole or in part, if, if not directly back into Russia, at least back into the Russian sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. Well, the more and more I look at the, the, the way this is playing out, it's not, we, 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 we want to make the knee jerk reaction of Russia is the bully and Ukraine is the, the bullied. Right. Uh, but then you see things that happen within the, you go back to the history of the Russian Ukraine, you go back to the people that are in the Ukraine that probably think they should be part of Russia. And like you said, there was two, there was a major split there. Uh, the more and more, the only people I really have compassion for in this case are the citizens caught in between the collateral damage and the soldiers that have bought the propaganda because when the power of propaganda is is extreme and if you've you've bought it you're kind of sort of innocent uh, we, we've had our free will discussion mm-hmm. you, you know you're you're only doing what you think is best based on the information you have and uh and so those are the only people i really feel sorry for in this situation and realistically you you, you talk about uh, this uh, dugan guy more and more and more Putin is probably one of those people that has given into the propaganda. He may have been sold himself. Well, there, there is kind of a, a chicken and egg thing with Dugan and Putin um, because it, it, it's not clear just if, if Dugan has ever had direct influence on Putin. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but Dugan has said that... Uh, he aligns with Putin because he is doing the kinds of things that I would want done to achieve these goals. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, basically, basically we have this belief in common. I have my way of doing it and he's the man for the job. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good, I will push back and disagree though, that I, again, two things can be true at once. Ukraine is a hot mess of a country. Mm -hmm. It has had, um, political corruption and dysfunction ever since its inception uh, after the uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union. That is true, but I also think that it is pretty cut and dry who the bad guy is here. Uh, now, it's also probably true that Ukraine has been uh, uh, massaging the truth in order to um uh make themselves more the victim i mean heck we've seen that you you talked about some of it uh actually i guess you didn't talk about it this time but uh you know we we keep getting these these uh social media posts out of the ukraine which are which are completely which turn out to be bogus i mean including one from a freaking video game two from a video game two Two, okay yeah uh well, at least two. We'll say at least two. At least two. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It, it, the amount of false videos and stories that have come out. Uh, but again, it's it's the meme. Uh, for every person that knows it was an explosion from a video game that was theoretically a Ukrainian power plant, there's, uh, you know, 10 million. Uh, what, it's probably 10 million views. I hadn't heard one, about that one. Was that the one where it was... The giant explosion that people were speculating was a fuel air bomb. Uh, that might have been the same one, okay. but it was supposed to be originally the post was was something like a power plant was mm. bombed, and uh, of course these people with American accents in the background going, "Oh, oh." Okay, you know. well then this is a different video from what I saw. Yeah. Uh, so well then maybe even more than one, maybe even more than uh, three well, from video I, games. And this but, is but this it, is infuriating because if Russia is dropping a fuel air bombs that's a big effing deal because a fuel air bomb for anyone who doesn't know is basically the strongest conventional munition we have Mm -hmm. okay it's 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 the biggest you can do without dropping a nuke and it is a nasty piece of work but but the 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 main point is for uh, if it was 10 million views you for of those 10 million views and shares and retweets Mm -hmm. and whatever how many of them actually ended up learning the real story Right. 
you know, because right. you're not seeing it on CNN, you're not seeing it on and, Fox News. And, and and that does lend itself to, you know, the more the more crazies that are saying this is this is, you know, fake or nonsense or a tool mm-hmm. or whatever. It is also odd the way that I talked about the the strengthening ties between Germany and Russia because of the the petroleum and natural gas imports uh, from from Germany. And yet all of a sudden, um, I mean, NATO hasn't been able to agree on anything for a long time. And now they're they're all pretty solidly in lockstep. I mean, for crying out loud, Germany is increasing its uh, its defense funding for the first time ever, I think mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it, I, uh, and they're they're moving in lockstep when it comes. I still have not heard if they've actually stopped importing frickin petroleum from the petrol state that is Russia. So there's all this talk and yet they're still funding the Russian war machine. Uh, but I digress. But let me see if I can find something real quick about our own imports. Hold on. OK. But yeah, you well, keep talking. Well, the, the, these kinds of things lend just just only add to the confusion, and we cannot have a rational discussion. I mean, th- th- this is something we've we've ranted about when it comes to the uh, postmodernism critical theory garbage. Is there is no objective truth there? Okay, well, if you can't agree that that there are uh, that there are objective truths, and here's what they are. You cannot have a rational discussion about what's going on and what to do about it. So we we, we have to know what's really going on uh, in the Ukraine, what's and, and what's really going on with the response to the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. So we, as the supposed uh, leaders of our polit- of our politics, the people. Uh, uh, Okay, so this is a fact check. So this person made this statement. Mm-hmm. We have doubled our oil imports from Russia. So basically, this is from an interview. So oil was mentioned earlier, and she said the statement, we have doubled our imports from Russia in the last year. So they were talking about oil at the time. So that's why it should it should actually be in brackets, not in parentheses yeah. there. But okay, so that's, the, and this is the fact check on it. So this is the reason why her statement was incorrect because we've only doubled the amount of crude oil imported from Russia last year. So we're not wholly innocent here. So by the way, this is how fact checks work. We don't, uh, I'd have to get the whole interview to see if she was talking about crude oil earlier or if it was just oil in general. But still, even that's mostly false. Okay, well, we we only doubled crude oil, even if they were talking about all petroleum products or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're going to call it, mm, yeah. You're, you're going to talk all petroleum products. That includes everything made of plastic. You're narrative checking there, buddy. You're not fact checking. You're not even pretending to fact check. Yeah, yeah. Well, fact checks are opinion, anyways. So. As this has been established in court. Yeah. So this is only adding to the confusion. And then when you have, the freaking former vice president going into the state of the union saying talking tough about Russia, about all these things we're going to do. Um, and, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that you don't feel the pain at the pump. Okay. Well, we were already feeling the pain at the pump. Stop pretending that it's just this that has, that made me spend $62 to fill up my tank yesterday. Uh, when I was, you know, a year and a half ago, it would have been half that. So stop pretending that this is what's doing that one. And two, it's all politics and sophistry because the first thing you did in office, you're saying you're going to do whatever you can, except what you're doing is releasing strategic oil reserves. Those are there in case there is a national emergency, in case there is a war to make sure we have enough petroleum to run our war machines, our critical devices. The amount of oil that is in strategic reserves can run the United States as a whole for two or three days. Yeah, that was uh, that was what I was watching alongside some uh, other commentators, and there was five of them, and each of them were fact checking everything he said yep. to a different degree. And one of them was like, "Yeah, that's like three days." Yeah, 
So yeah. the first thing you did in office was first Hold day on. in I office. Have a meme. I have a meme for this. You can keep talking. Kill but. the kill the Keystone Pipeline. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. Hey, this, okay. this might be our cover, our, our thumbnail, I think. So you're saying you're going to do whatever you can to not make Americans feel the pain at the pump and to help Ukraine, except you're not cutting off Russian oil. And one of the first things you did after killing the Keystone pipeline was then approving the Nord Stream pipeline. Why? Because you don't actually care about what you say you care about. You, you would rather uh, us have to import petroleum, but not have it running in a pipeline across our own soil, because then you have to deal with your radical environmental base of voters. This is pure politics, and you cannot be trusted. Speaking of not being able to be trusted, put the tinfoil hat back on. No, two things. First of all, okay. I'm not putting the tinfoil hat back on because the more I think about my analogy to the antennas, if I was a government that one that actually could have a way to read minds, and I wanted to read minds, I would convince people tinfoil stopped it because the people who put that hat on are the people I want to be listening to. Okay, well, get out the lead paint and that might work. Coat, coat your burnt, coat, coat, coat your head with lead uh, paint. But but the other uh, thing is, uh, well, shoot, I lost my other thought. I think, damn it, maybe I need tenfold to get the thought back. Okay. Uh, no, well, what, what were you saying before that? Oh, 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 no, no. Here's the thing: the, our theme, unity, right? Real mm -hmm. unity, and that's the thing. The, the the two main things that allowed this to happen is our discord in the West yeah. and our dependence on Russian oil. Uh, so those are the, probably the two biggest factors that embolden someone like Putin to yep. be able to act without us interfering too we, much. We, we have discord and weakness in, in here especially, uh, but in the West in general. So he thinks that he's not going to be opposed or if he is, it's not going to be effective. And he thinks he's got Europe by the short hairs because of their dependence on his petroleum exports. So and and po yeah, politically we can't. I mean, we we can elect our leaders, but at the same time, the oil thing, it's really tough because it's in, except except for the next election, it's out of our control. But as far as the unity thing, real unity, we need to start doing like we've been saying from the beginning: take a step back and say, is this factual as well as narrative? And is that, this about what they say it's about? Mm -hmm. And now you've got another tool in your in your kind of toolbox to know that a lot of the things you see on social media that are being presented to you are not even from a human source. They are purposefully put online to sow discord. So then you can take that second back. Okay, so now I've got this perspective that this is something that looks divisive. It's an internet source that I can't verify. It's not one of my friends that I know personally, right? And it's it seems to go against what actually is the data. So we've got three kind of cups we can pull from to say, you know what? This is probably not something I should be fighting my neighbor over. And, and we kind of take that step back. We already eliminate half the problem because then we will have actual true unity where we can bicker about this or that and this way of doing it. But it's we're not demonizing each other as an ist or a phobe or a or whatever. Okay, so now you're going to take us somewhere else. Okay, so this was the final point on Duyan I found when I was digging around that made me go, holy balls. So... People are wondering, there, there are people saying, mm, this doesn't feel right. We're not getting accurate information. What's going on? Why are, why, are the, why are the Western European countries finally standing up and acting strong in the face of, against Putin? When, <clears throat> again, the whole point of that history of Dugan is this has been going on and it's been some serious effing stuff. Remember the story from Hungary. A policeman was critically injured and another was killed with weapons that were supplied by the GRU. Okay. Why weren't you acting tough back then? <clears throat> well, 
lead hats on. Here we go. This is one of Alexander Dugan's more recent books. The Great Awakening versus the Great Reset. Alexander Dugan's The Great Awakening versus the Great Reset is an open declaration of war against the twin diseases of liberalism and Western political modernity. Dugan calls upon the inhabitants of the heartland to relentlessly attack on all theoretical and practical fronts the global elites of the coastlands who try to impose their perverse anti-human ideals by ruthlessly eradicating the long-standing cultures and traditions of all peoples in the world. The demented usurper Joe Biden and his slavish Democrat acolytes are opposed by the Trumpists who represent normal America and do not want to see their country submerged in a one-world transhumanist dystopia. Just like the other rooted societies, they want to preserve their time-honored way of life amidst the strangling tentacles of hysterical trans and homosexuals, treacherous anti-white agitators, and murderous Black Lives Matter grifters and terrorists. Thus, the stage is set for a showdown of truly apocalyptic proportions pitting the forces of righteous anger against those who preserve traditions and the true richness of human diversity against the Antichrist and his Soros-backed minions of insidious degeneracy and evil who want to erase all bonds and communities down to the human race itself. I'm assuming he means by the Antichrist, Klaus Schwab. In large part. So, well, and this is one of those things that it sounds raving madness. And, but the only parts that are madness is where he's assigning a uh, motive. Because Klaus Schwab tells you exactly what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. It's not a secret. We're not, we don't have to like read his mind to see what Klaus Schwab wants. Where the conspiracy hypotheses come in is, what are the cords connected to him? The, the conspiracy hypothesis yeah. is when I found this and went, uh, is Ukraine simply getting stuck and becoming a proxy war for the Great Reset versus the anti-Great Reset? Yeah. And this is where this, this confused me. So this article was, was very helpful. And this is actually for those in the audience, and the first time I saw that, uh, because this, I was kind of confused because Putin was one of Klaus's people for a while, but now everything he's doing right now is 100% against the WEF. Yes. And I was like, is this a, is this a part of the process or is this a wrench in the cog? Yeah, no, this is by, so one of the other things that Dugan has said that I don't think came up in, in the stuff I was sharing is that he does not want, he is very much against a one world government type thing, but mm -hmm. he's also doesn't want as much as he wants to reestablish the old USSR sphere of influence. He does not want a, another bipolar world. He does not want a, you know, us and NATO versus the USSR like mm -hmm. the good old days. He wants a multipolar world. He thinks that is a safer, healthier alternative for world peace and human flourishing. So in an, in an optimal world where Putin's not an asshole, uh, Russia would have just stood up to the WEF and, uh, and encouraged others to do as well. And say, but he had to be an asshole and invade Ukraine. Uh, but also, again, I talked about tidal waves and multiple surfers. Both the WEF and Russia benefited from our discord. Mm -hmm. Our discord is what made it all possible, but it also is what makes the globalization possible. Because they needed a reason for a reset. Which is, which in their, we have an ESG score as, as businesses, right? Mm -hmm. these, these giant global businesses have an ESG score. That's the goal, environment, social justice, and governance. Uh, so that's World Economic Forum meddling in business to unify everything. So that, that's just one way to do it. And Russia played into their hand by sowing the discord. So you need the climate 
issue to be forefront. You need, and, and polarizing, you need it to be forefront and polarizing. You need the social justice uh, situation to be forefront and polarizing. And then you need this whole uh, can of worms of the governance and sustainability of, of businesses based on those first two. That's what governance is. You know, how many board of directors do you have that are African American? How many board of directors do you have that are Indian? How many trans? How many, you know, female? Uh, that that plays into your governance score. So those first, how how do your products affect the environment? Uh, all of that plays into the governance score. So uh, when you see, like, say Nike jumping on the back of the Kaepernick campaign. Uh, that helps their score because they also also have slaves in Indonesia doing their work, which knocks down the, the human rights part of, of their, uh, their governance score. So uh, the WEF needs that discord. Russia sowed the discord, but now Russia is fighting the global network. So it's really just, they created the binary that he, you said Dugan didn't want. You know, a lot of people for a while now, um, mostly because of the racial discord, have been comparing the era we currently live in with um, the civil rights era and the, the unrest, the 60s and the unrest in the 60s. And I have been thinking for a while that a more accurate analogy to the era we live in is the lead up to World War One, because and it's it's. People get hung up on the, um, the, the strange interconnected um, foreign policy that created the domino effect that led to World War I, but that still was, was allowed to happen and then was allowed to continue the, with millions of, of young men being thrown into, the, into a meat grinder of pointlessness because the elites were such elitists. The elites, the ruling elites had become so disconnected from, um, uh, from the masses that they were playing these games amongst themselves and they didn't give a damn about the consequences to the people as a whole. And I think we're seeing that and and we could be being pushed into that in the same way we were pushed into World War One. So basically what you said, you're comparing those elites playing games with the WEF elites versus Putin mm -hmm. as an elite mm -hmm. in his own right and Xi Jinping as an elite in his own right. Because yeah. I'm still wondering where he's going to come into all this because he's still speaking at the forum events and everything. So, well, I think what he's doing and, and I, I think we've got to wrap it up here. So I'm going to wrap it up my final thought with this, I think what Xi Jinping is doing is watching and waiting to see how this plays out mm -hmm. because it, it could be a win-win for him either way with, with Russia being cut off from world markets uh, via SWIFT, which is actually a double-edged sword and may end up hurting us more than them because so many Western banks have Russian debt well, if Russia can't access the global financial system, they can't make payments on their debt, mm -hmm. which puts Western banks and central banks in threat of defaulting. Anyway, well, it's just strengthening the ties between Russia and China. Mm -hmm. So China is, is probably bankrolling this, what's going on here, at least in large part. Mm -hmm. So they gain from that and then if Russia is successful in, in staring down the West and taking over this chunk of the Ukraine and putting the rest of Ukraine back under its sphere of influence, he's going to feel like he has a free hand to go after Taiwan. And you will be made to care. Yeah. You may not care about Ukraine. You, will, you, you cannot help but care about what happens in Taiwan. Let's go back to this quote and kind of close out on this. Let's read between the lines of this quote. See, again, I'm going to read it again. The problem you Americans have in dealing with us is that you think you understand us, but you don't. You look at China and you think they are not us. You look at us Russians and you think they are like us, but you are wrong. Now let's read between the lines and kind of flip things around. We can also make a statement that says, 
we Russians are more like, like the Chinese mm-hmm. than we are like you. And uh, I think that actually is kind of a little bit telling in how, you know, and our world leaders know this, mm-hmm. you know, you see some of the decisions, someone like Biden, who, you know, we can have our opinions, but you notice we're, we're, he is playing this, or his administration is kind of playing this carefully, uh, whether you like it or not on either side. I think both sides are kind of mad at him by how he's playing it right now. Uh, but there's a reason NATO's kind of holding back and there's a reason we are kind of holding back. And it's not just that we're isolationists. It's, it's nobody knows what the dragon in the room is going to do. Yeah. And the, the, there's a, there's a danger of being too heavy handed of of responding too strongly against Russia because of the interconnectedness of the Mm -hmm. economics there just from petroleum Okay, well, now imagine the the interconnected uh, economics of going to war with China to stop them from invading Taiwan. Mm -hmm. What's that going to do to global economics? But if you don't, what's that going to do to global economics? Because Taiwan is one one of the top 10 economies in the world. Yeah. And is the top producer of chips and not Mm -hmm. the tasty potato kind. The kind that make your car go boom, boom. The kind that make everything electronic do anything. Mm-hmm. All right. So now imagine if that supply is disrupted for a while, and then when it comes back online, it's under the control of communist China. Yeah. During the State of the Union, Biden did talk about making chip producing uh, factories, and, and but that takes time. Not only does it take time, we also got to think of where the raw material is coming from and yes. along those lines. We, we, we have put ourselves in a hole and we are not doing anything to dig ourselves out of it. So we, we mentioned, you know, being our own producers of oil and even being an exporter of oil would pull uh, Europe out from under the thumb of Putin. Well, you can't do that overnight. The, some of the experts I've heard have said that it would take a minimum of eight months to ramp production back up to where it was under Trump mm-hmm. when we were exporting petroleum. And that doesn't count all of the refineries we would need because we have not produced refineries in forever. And people don't know this, but there's a couple, there are different types of petroleum and our refineries are geared to refine one particular type. Mm-hmm. So if we, uh, if, if we drill the other kind, we have to export it because we can't refine it. Uh, and remember why we stopped doing that goes back to the E of the ESG, the, the climate change debate. And there's something I really want to bring up, but I'm pretty damn sure it's why those five videos that I put saved for later to watch were taken down before I could even watch them within 24 hours. Uh, that has to do with that and has to do with the propaganda around that whole thing. And I really want to bring it up, but I think that's a surefire way to get banned right now because this particular entity has been basically pulled from uh, information space because they reported data. Well, let's, let's talk about it offline and <clears throat> dig into it some more. Um, but I, I said final thoughts. Well, here's my here's my real final thought. The, the the reason I was talking about we're putting ourselves in a hole and we're not doing anything to dig out of it. The the more we stay down in this hole, the deeper we're going to get, and the more it's going to hurt when we finally do decide to dig our way out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like it's like getting overweight and not doing anything about it. And then you become morbidly obese and your health is in danger and you have to do something about it. Well, now it's going to be more painful. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be harder. So you'd better start before you get to that point. Yeah. And let's start the process because it, it, it's, a, it's a mental skill. Let's start the process of identifying, especially on social media, whether this is meant to be divisive or, or the true were the true meaning of the word inclusive. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
and I think I think that's the first mental step people can take because again, that's half the problem here. Half the problem is we're divided, and not in the good. I just semi disagree with you on how we should live our lives way, but yeah. but in the uh, in the I hate you way. Uh, so so yeah, let's let's start there. I think baby steps on this one because it's going to be what are we at about twelve years of the of the intense social media age and more so of the the lighthearted social media age uh, where this started going on. So it's going to be a process. Just, it, it's again like your analogy was perfectly correct. It's like being severely obese for ten years. There's a lot that's going to have have to happen for you to change that path. Or, or, or if you're an alcoholic for a decade, withdrawals are going to suck and, and you have to get through that process. So yeah, but your liver dying is going to suck worse. Yes. Yes. Your liver dying is going to suck worse. Uh, all, right. all right. Well, we'll close it out there. This one, this one, I think I'm glad we redid it because it was an important yeah. one. So. Yeah. And we'll get back to what next time. Cause this sucked. <laughs> this is depressing. What is wheel of time, right? Yeah. All right. See you later, guys.